Okay, so to get started here, uh, I've gone ahead and I've added three wavetable oscillators. This is by Weevil. And I've also added a stereo mixer just so we can combine these signals and hear them. Let's go ahead and start by combining these signals. Now, I do plan to come back and to change this later on, but this at least will let us get started. Okay, so when it comes to a wavetable oscillator, if you have not used one of these before, basically you can see in this area here, these are all the different shapes in the wavetable. And we can modulate through it, or we could use something like dispersion to scrub through it for us. So I'm gonna grab this first value here to modulate that. But what's cool now is we can use some of these other values and modulate through the other points the other wavetable oscillators as well, all at the same time. Okay, so let's continue on with that. Now, before we go any farther, uh, I wanna add some filtering in because there's kind of a lot of high frequencies going on and I would rather us not hear that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wire the output of all of this into these two filters so that we can pull this down a little bit, have a little bit more of a mellow sound. Now, another interesting thing that we could use dispersion for is to change our stereo field. Again, because we have several things going on here, we could think about positive voltage as panning something to the right and negative voltage as panning something to the left. So I'm gonna use uh, Cherry Audio's panner module and we've got, now let's just go all the way here. I'm gonna add six of these. Now, the reason that I'm adding six is the wavetable oscillator has both uh, an A and a B. And what we can do is we can patch the output of these individual channels to the panners, and then we can use dispersion to move them around in the stereo field. Okay, so with all of the panners here um, patched up, let's use some of the outputs from dispersion to move things around in stereo field and what I'll do is I'm just going to use all of these and I'm going to patch all of the outputs of dispersion here into a panner. Now how you decide to allocate this is up to you. I'm going in order just for simplicity but it might be interesting to spread those out later on. Let's take a listen. You can hear what happens there is we're starting to get a stereo image because we're moving these pieces around in the stereo space. Now up to this point we have been using dispersion for control voltages but dispersion can also be used for pitch information as well. Okay so I've added a couple of more modules to our setup here. We have a sync generator which is going to give us some sense of rhythm. We have a sync divider so we can control how often we're going to switch notes. I have another instance of dispersion. This is going to be used to control our pitch. And then I have three instances of septitone, which is a quantizer also by Collider Modular. So let's go ahead and get this patched up. I am going to patch the sync out to the sync divider. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. And I'm going to give the clock signal to each of the instances of septitone. Now, this is, this is basically the rhythm on which we're going to change notes. Now, I'm going to grab the output of dispersion, I'm gonna grab three different outputs here. And I'm gonna pass each output into a septitone. And then I'm gonna take the quantized output of septitone and I'm gonna pass it into each of our wavetable oscillators. Okay, so what I've done at this point is we now can control the approximate octave range. So you can see as I'm, as I'm moving this, the um, octave values are changing here. And you can see though that they're all the same note right now. So as I increase the spread, what will happen is these pitches will spread out from each other. So you can see right here, we're getting A3, G3, and D3. And as I continue to do this, they spread out from each other wider and wider. So let's take a listen. So maybe the last thing to do here is just to add a little bit of effects. And uh, there's a bunch of great effects out there. I think for this, what I'm gonna use is actually, I'm gonna use a VST and I'm gonna use Spaced Out by Baby Audio. <laughs>
So one of the last things that we could add to round out our patch here is we've been treating these a little bit like pads in that the sounds have had no articulation. But we could experiment with adding some articulation as well and then further refining dispersion to give us some different results. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little bit of a change here. So instead of passing the output of the oscillators directly into the panners, I am first going to pass the output of the oscillators into an amplifier. So this is a little bit different than a, a classic synth architecture where you might go through the filter first. Instead, we're gonna go from oscillator to amplifier, and then we're gonna go from amplifier to panner, and then panner to mixer, and then mixer into our stereo filters up here. Now, the advantage of doing this is that we can then have envelopes which change the shape before it gets panned. And then we don't have to worry as much about the stereo image because it's mono up to this point. So all I've done right now is I've taken the output of the oscillators, wired them into the amplifiers, and then the amplifiers into the panner. Now, if we were to turn this back on, we shouldn't be hearing anything. And there you can see we don't. And the reason why is because this amplifier is now controlling that signal and there's nothing happening. So the last thing that we need to do is to wire up some kind of gate signal here to our percussive envelope generators. Now I'm using the percussive envelope generators here just to get a, a short plucky sound. Even though we're not creating percussion, they actually work quite well for that. The other nice thing about the percussive envelope generator is that you can use a trigger with them instead of a gate. And so because you can use a trigger, then you can use a sync divider to easily get a different uh, note division for triggering them. So I've added here three sync dividers and I'll grab the sync out from our single generator. So everything will be in beat here. And what I can do is we can just set them to different note intervals. Maybe, maybe I'll make this one a dotted eighth note and we'll see what happens there. And I'm gonna wire the clock out to the trigger in of the percussive envelope and then the envelope out, of course, will control the amplifier.